Welcome to this Sunday, August 10th edition of Wasatch Weekends. I'm your host, Ben Roof. On today's show, we're talking a little bit about Ancient Aliens with the host of Ancient Aliens Live. And then we've got a small town story focusing on a local realtor who's supporting a lot of local nonprofits. But first, a quick local announcement. Today is a big day for a Park City favorite. It is the Tour de Suds. Starting today at City Park, it is a seven mile bike ride straight up to Guardsman Pass. All participants are encouraged to don festive costumes to really kick off the start to the fall mountain biking season. And of course, there's only a couple days left to catch the Park Silly Sunday markets. So make sure to head out there before it's gone for the summer. But now, let's take a quick look at the local weather. This weather report is brought to you by Sun and Ski Sports, your new mountain sports headquarters. Welcome back to Wasatch Weekends. We all remember the classic show Ancient Aliens. Well, they're coming back with a new show called Ancient Aliens Live, where they're taking questions and visiting some of these spots. Now, Gretchen had the opportunity to sit down with the host to talk all about it. Welcome back to the show. I'm your host, Gretchen Pleshaw. I'm very stoked on this interview with Giorgio Tsoukalos. I said it correctly. Ancient Aliens on the History Channel. How are you doing, Giorgio? I'm doing great. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me, Gretchen. Of course. So before we get into all things aliens, I am so into it, by the way. You have the right person today. We had a little debate in studio who is going to be your uh, new best friend, and I'm hoping you're going to choose me over everyone else. <laughs> of course I would choose you. Thank you. Everybody else, never. <laughs> Thank you. So H and Aliens Live, I just want to know all the things. How did you get into this? Is our, have aliens always been a moment for you, even as a little boy growing up? How, why, why aliens? I want to know. <laughs> well, th this is something that I have to lay blame to my grandma and my parents. Okay. Because both my grandma and my mom thought it would be a great idea to talk to me about chariots of the gods when I was a little boy. Cool. And also uh, Atlantis with, by, by, Charles, uh, by, Charles, um, by Edgar Cayce. Okay. And so this was something that was dinner table conversation in the house that I grew up in. And then later, you know, Eric von Daniken came along and, and Kevin Burns from Prometheus. And so those were my influences. That is so wild and so cool. We did not talk about aliens and I wish we would have more because this is something I am so enthused about. I believe that there are aliens walking amongst us right now. I'm pretty sure of it. I really believe that. <laughs> Hey, you never know because, you know, this idea that the ancient astronaut theory proposes that if these aliens exist, then they look like you and me. Yeah. And that, I think, will be the big secret or is the big secret that let's say hypothetically that a spaceship lands and the hatch opens and they walk out. Yeah. They look like us I love because it. according to the ancient texts, we were made in their image and not the other way around. Ugh. I'm so into this. I think that is so cool and I totally believe it. And I have to give you a little shout out. I told many people I was interviewing you today and people were real excited. So many of my friends have watched your program. They're into it. They love you. You are a very beloved human, at least here in Colorado. <laughs> well, thank you very much. I appreciate it and I, and I send back all my love. I feel the love. Thank you. Awesome. Yes, of course. And Utah and everywhere else. I want to know, what are you doing right now? What is the tour all about? What, what are you stoked about with this? I'm stoked to take Ancient Aliens, the TV show, yes. on a road show 
and uh, it'll be a 90-minute multimedia presentation with myself, David Childress, William Henry, and Nick Pope, where we're addressing questions from the audience, and also we're visiting the evergreens from the show, like Palenque, Stonehenge, mm. and uh, Gobekli Tepe, Egypt, Puma Punku, all those different places. So if you're a fan of the show, yeah. bring your friends, bring your family. It's a fun night out in the town and it'll be a party. Come to experience it. It'll, it's very special. I feel like everywhere you go, um, do you just, are people drawn to you everywhere you go? You have such awesome energy. I love that you're so passionate about what you do and you believe 100% what you're speaking about. And it's so beautiful. That's such a neat thing that even early on, your parents kind of gave you this idea about aliens and it's something that has really created your whole life and your work that's pretty neat well thank you I, I appreciate that and you know the the search for extraterrestrial life or the question of whether or not we're alone in the universe I mean that that is the ultimate quest yeah. it's the ultimate quest to find out you know are we alone are, are we is somebody else out there and if so were they already here Right. Are we going to do the same thing as they did? Will we one day go to another planet and teach a primitive society how to make fire or to build right. or to make agriculture and mathematics and all these things? And I think that the answer to that is a resounding yes, that in the future, we too will go out there and teach. So cool. And so the fact that we've had teachers a long time ago, they too had teachers. You, you play that back. So it's the proliferation of knowledge throughout our galaxy. It's one, we are one tiny cogwheel in a gigantic mechanism. I love that you said that because anytime I get a little nervous about something or have a weird day, I'm like, Ugh, I'm just on a spinning rock. It's fine, I'm good. <laughs> I had a question. Go yeah, ahead. no, in the, end, in the end, it's all good, really. Right, I mean, right, it's all good. It's, it's, uh, it's a miracle that all of us, everyone is alive. Mm -hmm. we've, we've all sort of, started to lose wonder many of us you know have become cynical and it's time right. that you know we should step back and appreciate how you know we're alive we yeah. are experiencing this world and um we, we are losing sight of that too so i think it's time for all of us to stop and smell the roses I love that you and I definitely have the same vibe. We would be in the same tribe as well because the other day it was raining and I was like, and people get frustrated or angry about silly things and yet there is water falling from the sky and no one's noticing. Pretty big deal, right? Like a little bit of a miracle there. <laughs> I was wondering, yes. this I didn't know, what was your favorite alien show or what is now show, movie, program? other than your own, of course, um, about aliens. Was there one that really resonated with you, touched your heart, got you going? Uh, well, I mean, look, there are, are, there are many uh, TV shows and, and movies that, that have covered the ancient astronaut right. theory. I mean, w w one of my uh, favorite ancient astronaut movies is the Nicolas Cage movie from 2009 or 2010 called Knowing. Okay. And that, that is a, an ancient astronaut story. Or you have, uh, you know, Total Recall with, with Arnold Schwarzenegger is an ancient <laughs> astronaut movie where they propose, you know, the, terraforming Mars at the end and things like that. So, cool. so, you know, obviously all incredibly fictionalized, but, you know, movies and TV shows have been used as a tool of conditioning, mm -hmm. you know, this idea that today we're now talking about aliens publicly and that there have been now in the last two months congressional hearings. I mean, that's something that's unprecedented. Right. You know, I really do think that that is the result of years, decades of conditioning through movies, TV shows, including ancient aliens, that these topics are now topics that you no longer have to whisper behind your hand, you can openly talk right. about it. Yeah. And if you would have told me 30 years ago that that's one day okay to talk about these things, I was like, never, but here we are. <laughs> and so this is a positive development. I love that. Now, Ancient Aliens and your tour, I know I'm very stoked. I definitely want to come check it out. How can everyone go and see where you're going to be? 
Well, we have a website called ancientaliensalivetour.com. Okay. And on that website, you will see all of our tour dates besides where we are right now. And, um, you know, I hope to, to see you at one of these events. Georgia, uh, because it's, a, yeah. it's a thing for the whole family, and it's a fun night out in the town. Giorgio, you're awesome. I am so stoked. I can't wait to talk all things aliens even more with you. <laughs> Thank you so much yes, for joining us. Yes, I hope us. to see you there. You definitely will. Thank you so much, Giorgio. I really appreciate it, and I'm stoked to see you. Thank you, Gretchen. You. Appreciate it. Of course, very, very soon. And keep it right here for more of the show. Welcome back to the show. Julie Hopkins is a local realtor who is instrumental in supporting a lot of the major Park City nonprofits, and the Park City Chamber of Commerce sat down with her to share a small town story. Welcome to Small Town Stories, sponsored by the Park City Chamber. Today, it is our pleasure to welcome Julie Hopkins, real estate agent, right here to our set. I'm looking forward to hearing her small town story. Julie, thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. So what attracted you to Park City initially? What brought you to our beautiful small mountain town? Well, I have a really rough story. I grew up in Aspen, Colorado, which was a charmed, fascinating, wonderful childhood. And then I came to uh, Park City basically for school. And um, I quickly learned that Salt Lake City was not the place for me and gravitated to Park City because it felt so much like Aspen and was the small um, mountain town that I knew from growing up. And my dad coincidentally had a lot of real estate investments here. So we had property here and I was familiar with it. And it just felt like home from the beginning. There's something about Park City that does. It feels like home right away, whether you've been here for many, many years, you just moved in or you're coming to visit. So that's so very well said and very relatable to many people. It is, and I've always just loved the people here. Um, I feel like I'm friends with people who are 20 years younger than me, 20 years older than me, people my age, and they just always have your back and they're just amazing people. And I just had a party at my house and there was people from all walks of life that came. We had music on the street and Hearth and Hill did a barbecue and it was just the most incredible party. And I looked at the people that were there and they were just um, all age groups, all sorts of people, people I'd known for 40 years of living here, people I'd known for one year of living here. And I just, I love our town and the people. And what an incredible moment to be able mm -hmm. to reflect back and mm -hmm. kind of see a bit of a full circle of your influence here yeah. in our town over the years. Uh, it, it was, it was great. And growing up in Aspen, you were very involved in the winter sports community. I was lucky. Um, I was introduced to skiing at age three by my dad, and I've always told him that that was the best gift he ever gave me was to teach me skiing at a young age because now it just comes second hand. And um, I was in the Aspen ski racing program as a young child. I'm still best friends with all of my friends from those programs of skiing five days a week together. And um, certainly I don't ski like that anymore, but it's in my blood and I, I love it. I always say any day on the mountain is the best day and I'll ski in any conditions and I, I, I absolutely love skiing. And what a great place to be able to continue skiing yes, after that experience. Yes, <laughs> yes. I'm fortunate enough to be one of the people that joined the club 1981 up at Deer Valley so I can ski early in the morning right before work and then have a productive, great work day. Oh, what a beautiful time to be up on the mountain. Too. Oh, it is. It's very reflective and, and watching the sun come up. It's been it's been a, a absolute, uh, I feel very spoiled, I guess is the right word. That's a good word for us. <laughs> very spoiled. Yeah. I don't know how many people are aware of the fact that you were in marketing for many years, did a lot of big project, worked with a lot of influential companies here in Park City before you shifted to real estate. Yes. Um, I had a very... Um, successful marketing career. I ran the marketing for companies like The Sharper Image, Mrs. Fields Com uh, Cookies, um, even Park City Mountain Resort. And then one day, I actually I was the head of marketing for Mrs. Fields Cookies and I was driving up the canyon and I 
I just didn't want to do it anymore. And I remember calling my boyfriend at the time and saying, what do, you, what do you think if I quit my job? And he said, that's the best decision I've ever heard. He said, you look like 90 miles of bad road. <laughs> and I thought, oh, okay. Then I called my dad and said, what do you think if I quit my job? And he said, when? I said, I think tomorrow. And he said, what are you gonna do about health insurance? I said, I don't even care. I just don't wanna be in corporate America anymore. And he said, what are you gonna do? And I said, I don't know, but I just don't wanna do it anymore. So I, I quit my job, I gave him my two weeks notice and I didn't do anything for a number of months. And um, my mom was talking to her friends and one of her friend's sons owns Summit Sotheby's here in Park City and he called me and said, you really need to get into real estate. And I said, I, I don't see myself being a realtor. And um, after a few conversations, he talked me into it and I've never looked back. I absolutely love it. It's been the best career. Um, you apply all of that marketing knowledge. Um, you meet the most amazing people. I feel like everyone asks me what I do every day and I'm say I problem solve. Um, the most, it's different every day. You don't know what you're gonna walk into. And, um, and I, I, I love the real estate, um, just real estate. I love all the properties and everything that we do. So it's been a fantastic career. And I've done it for about 12 and a half years now. Wow. And as someone from the outside looking into that industry, real estate, marketing, I feel like you do a brilliant job combining those two in a way that's not sterile, which it can be, but in a very warm manner. You're able to be a part of so many great nonprofits here in Park City. You're able to get out there, sponsor different programs. Tell me a little bit about how you do combine the marketing with the real estate. Well, there's so many different layers to it. And I, I think when we talk about the heart of Park City, it is the nonprofits and it is, it is the heartbeat of our town. And I think um, there's a scripture and I'm, I'm not necessarily a religious person, but I am a spiritual person. And I'm not gonna say it right, but there's one that's really stuck with me where much is given, much is required. And I apologize if I didn't say that right, but um, I definitely work very hard. I work seven days a week and I work many hours, but I, I love it and I thrive on it. But I also feel very blessed in this life and I feel like you need to give back. And so I've set aside a certain amount of money that I give, a percent, I give from my business to the community every year. And I, I do that because I want to give to Park City, but it also enhances me and who I am. And um, so I've kind of tied that in with my business and um, that's a part of, of, um, of, I guess, the marketing strategy a little bit is, is part of that giving and it all kind of works together. Um, I think also um, with my marketing background, I'm able to customize my marketing strategy for each um, property that I represent. It's just not a cookie cutter approach. Everything's customized. So that's been really wonderful. And then I think too, um, just trying to set myself apart in the market by doing things that are more community oriented in the marketing approach, if that makes sense. It absolutely does. Mm -hmm. When you tie that into being a Park City local, seeing the benefits of these programs, of these activities and events to so many people within the community, to mm -hmm. your clients as well, it really brings a whole nother aspect in supporting these great activities and nonprofits. Yeah, and there's some things I do quietly as well to help individuals, but it's, it's, it's all just um, been a fun ride and um, I wouldn't look back. And sometimes I say I wish I'd gotten into real estate sooner, but I think it's just the path that I've been on and it's one thing leads to another and it's where you're at. Oh, it's such an interesting real estate market. There's so much that could be said about it here in Park City and beyond. But when you think about real estate on its own as a career, how much you love helping people, also the homes, the transactional aspect of it, is there one part of it that you enjoy more than the rest of it or one thing that you really feel rewarded from when helping people find and sell homes? Well, I think the real estate market's pretty tricky. Um, I'm currently with Keller Williams and Gary Keller, the head of the, of the whole Keller Williams said, this is probably the trickiest market we've ever been in. And I think I love that because I love applying my knowledge of real estate and how, again, how to problem solve and how to help people navigate this, this really challenging time in a real estate market. Um, so I, yeah, for me, it's like helping people 
understand the market. It's not just the market. It's understanding how to navigate a really tricky time. And for me, waking up every morning and trying to help people with their individual needs and try to understand a really um, challenging market, um, to me, that's very satisfying. And how can we contact you, reach out to you? Well, that's really? very nice of you to ask. I'm really easy to get a hold of. You can do a quick Google search, or you can call me at 435-901-0616 or julie at jhparkcity.com. And in the few seconds we have left, if there's one thing that you love the most about Park City, what would it be? Oh, definitely the outdoors, um, skiing, biking, golfing, and then the people. Great. Well, thank you so much, Julie, for being here. I've loved sharing your small town story. Thank you. I know you're a big part of what makes Park City the beautiful town it is. So thanks Very for being nice here. Very nice of you to say. Thank you so much. All right. We'll be back with more right here on Small Town Stories, sponsored by the Park City Chamber, right after this. This weather report is brought to you by Sun and Ski Sports, your new mountain sports headquarters. Sunday edition of Los Angeles Weekends. Don't forget to catch us tomorrow where we're going to be talking about how small businesses can get involved with the Navy and how we can help prepare our mental health for recovering from a crisis. Until then, I'm your host, Ben Roof. This is Wasatch Weekends.